Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Maritime Matters. Whether you're listening via radio wave or 95, 97.5 FM, via an internet radio app, via Cable Bahamas, channel 951, or via BTC Flow, channel 606. That'll be 606, BTC Flow. We appreciate you and we humbly welcome you to our show. We now encourage you to check out our YouTube page, Maritime Matters Bahamas. Here, you can listen to all our previous shows at your own leisure. So feel free to hit us up on YouTube, Maritime Matters Bahamas. Again, pleasant good evening. I am Captain Glenn Bain. This is show number 32, folks. And tonight, we got a guest that is indeed a polished Bohemian maritime historian guru, a dynamically knowledgeable individual that will share just a percentage of his wealth of information in local boat building from whence we came. Tonight, we're going to delve deep into the inner works of the Bohemian boat building era, the size, the speed, the style of boats that were built across our archipelago over the past couple centuries. The big names of boat building families, the largest vessels, the fastest vessels, and so on. We will engage discussions on the reasons why boat building is no longer such a popular undertaking in our country today. So get those questions together, people. We're going to take a ride on this lively and informative maritime adventure. Be sure to stay tuned. Our sponsors for the night's show are One on One Pharmacy. Listen, you know the deal on them. My good cousin Shantia. Anna Mummy, Stephanie. And my other cousin, Ansela. Silla, Silla, remember you tonight. Lord, I know you had me to kill. Yeah, man. They, they kind of put it together. And, you know, they got one or two. Beautiful pharmacist that knows how to set you up properly and give you what you need to pull down pain and to pull down aches and to pick up spirits, all kind of things they got for you, man. Just check out one-on-one -on -one pharmacy. You don't even have to go to the store before you put in your order. You can order online. Just go to one-on-onepharmacy.com. There are two locations, one on East Street South, the other, Charles Sanders Highway. A third location on the way, people, that one's going to be in Freeport. When you walk in the door at those places, they treat you with royalty. Say hello to Stephanie, of course, and anybody. Just let them know Maritime Matter sent you. And I don't know if you can get no, they can't treat you no more special, but they will look at you and say, oh, yeah, we got you. We are secondly sponsored by Bahamas Maritime Connection Limited. We provide a full slate of ISPS Maritime Security Services. And you know what that's all about. To the listening audience out there, it will be remiss of me to go any further and not introduce our wonderful producer. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you tonight, again, the insatiable, the man of the hour, the man with all the power. He is fully able, quite capable, the one and only Mr. Craig Gibson. Yes, and he chose a salute at the crowd. You're listening to Maritime Matters, people. On this show, we talk maritime. Maritime Matters as weekly at 19.30, every Tuesday night here on Love 97 FM. The purpose of this show is to highlight persons 
that made significant contributions to maritime in the Bahamas and to sensitize Bahamians of opportunities in the maritime sector. Halfway through the show, as usual, we will open the phone lines. The number to call will be 326-8255. Again, that is 326-8255. And as always, we highlight as outstanding maritime heroes of the past. They are all gone but will never be forgotten. And may their souls continue to rest in peace. We're speaking of none other than the HMBS Flamingo champion skipper, senior commander Amos Roll. That exhumian is one of our maritime heroes, people. Port controller from the past, the extraordinaire, Mr. Leon Flowers. The sloop sailing pioneer of all. The one and only, the legendary, Raleigh Gray. And of course, our Olympic sailing, sailing gold medalists, Sir David Knowles and Cecil Cook. And may all of their souls continue to rest in peace. What do we have in our current maritime security matters? Headline says the RBDF captured another 80 irregular Haitian migrants. So we got an apprehension conducted just off Water Key, Ragged Island. Do you know about Water Key, Ragged Island? What happens at Water Key? Water Key is right next to Flamingo Key and Jamaica Key and all those keys to the very northern end of the Ragged Island chain, almost to Long Island, almost to Exuma. And I can tell you, I navigated those waters over and over again. And we had something in the Defense Force when I was a captain um, back in the day called Haitian Patrol. And what was Haitian Patrol? Haitian Patrol was when we go out there and we focus primarily on just trying to abduct Haitian migrant vessels, right? And I can tell you that if they were in the area of Water Key and Flamingo Key. Obviously, they were, they were coming up to try and, 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 and get through Hawksbill Rock because that's the, 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 the route that those sloops normally take coming up the chains. Usually, they go to New Vitas Light, um, um, just to the west of Long Island. Um, but this time, they went to Water Key. I don't know if it was off course or they were just doing that so that they, they, you know, they could hide and, um, uh, under those keys as they come up. But they would be going to Hawksville Keys, then Sandbars, then straight up the Exuma, the Exuma Keys on the western side and work their way up. That's what they normally do. I, I, I have no information on what happened in this case, but based on where they were found, or where they were abducted, that's what I would say. And there's a second vessel with about 20 to 30 migrants. And this, this reportedly um, by my good friend, the Commander Defense Force. Dr. Commodore Raymond King. And apparently the Coast Guard is monitoring the second vessel. I don't know what happened since, because obviously this was a day or two ago. I don't know what happened since then. But again, according to Dr. King, <clears throat> so far this year, just under 2,400 migrants have been apprehended in Bohemian waters. Wow. Two, almost two and a half thousand in the years, what? We're just, we just entering the, the last quarter. I think um, we got a lot to be concerned about, people. What about our international matters in maritime? We got quite a bit here, but I, I, I'm going to just touch upon them real quick because my guest is hot and ready to go. And I don't want to hold him up because he has so much information for us. People, I don't even know if we could take no calls tonight. But you know, we can open the line anyhow to see what you all are saying. International matters and maritime. On the international maritime feeds. The G7 nations plans to restrict shipping of Russian oil using a price cap. That's just jokes, people. Jokes. I say jokes. Why is it jokes? While Russia exports minimal Crude oil. Russia don't export much crude oil. Russia, big thing is gas. Notice they ain't saying nothing but gas because they know what can happen. The majority of its profit comes in via export of refined gases. Europe is highly dependent on gas being imported from Russia. 
to the extent that major European cities can come to a power generation halt if Russia refuses to supply them, or if Russia was to turn off that, that pipeline. And they did, they did recently say they was having little issues, and, and the European nations started to get a little edgy. They was like, boy, we could be in trouble, because they know they can't get the quantity of gases to keep their generation plants going if they don't have it directly from Russia at this time. So, you know, we got to be him in terms of Russia got them by the cojones. That's what's going on right up in here. They, they can't do nothing with Russia. And that's why I don't know why they keep talking, but they, why are they focusing on, 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 on crude oil? On Russia ain't no crude oil. They're only giving them that because they have it. But what they're focusing on is where they make their money from. Gases. Again, we have HMS Prince of Wales. Now, this is the, one of the, 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 the three big aircraft carriers. Well, I'm not sure it's three. They might have four. But, but one of the new ones. It's just, I think, 2017, 2018, this one was, was launched. And they're having so much problem. HMS Prince of Wales. They have a damage now. They failed to make the trip. They were supposed to go to the U.S. for four months, starting last week. Um, I'm heading out to, to go to the U.S., to do some exercises and to visit some Caribbean ports. Apparently, the coupling that connects the final two sections of the shaft on the starboard side failed, thereby causing shaft problem, because of obviously the shaft probably got warped when that happened, propeller problem, because, you know, the, the, the propeller would have dropped and touched the bottom, because if that, that, that coupling gives way, then the shaft basically suspended, eh? And if it turned and it could be hitting the hull of the ship, all kind of things could be going on. And they also have superfic superficial damage to the rudder on the starboard side. Everything on the starboard side. The port side, no problem. But once that coupling gave way, they had problems. So that aircraft carrier now have to go to dry dock. But she will be replaced by a larger, big sister carrier. The only one of its class so far, HMS Queen Elizabeth. And the HMBS, HMS, sorry, see how we say B? We can talk about that some more too. HMS Queen Elizabeth was previously slated for exercises in the Mediterranean Sea. So she will have to shorten the exercises with the U.S. so that she could relocate to the meds and do her thing. Number four on our list. Iran seizes and later releases two U.S. Navy unmanned surface vessel. USV. What is the unmanned surface vessel? Well, we had a 300-foot Iranian frigate pull two American unmanned surface vessels out of the water in the Red Sea. Kept them on board for 18 hours and released them the following morning. Upon abduction of the USVs, two U.S. Navy guided missile destroyers that were nearby, not, not too close, but they were near enough, operating in the nearby um, 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 area, they contacted the Iranian ship and they demanded the immediate release of those sailor drones. So it's like when they say unmanned surface vessel, it's a, 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 a small ship, well, it ain't a ship, it's a boat with nobody on it. They just put on the water for, for survey. It's like, it's like you have drones going in there, but this one is floating on the sea. And that's what that was. And they got them all over the place. So they had some in, in, in the Red Sea. Not the Black Sea now. You know Russia and Ukraine knocked them with the water. But in the Red Sea. And um, the Iranian came across it. Took it out of the water. You know, they want to check it out and, and see what technology they got and this and that and the next. Um, but once they saw those, those two um, guided missile destroyers came to them and tell them, look, look, that's ours. Put it back. And then they put it back. Ain't no big deal. Iran ain't no fool. Last but not least. We got the invasion of Taiwan risks. The risks of Taiwan being invaded by who? The big dog, China. What happens if this happens? We got container shipping and internet cables that China would obviously take, take control of. And the container shipments to and from major ports in China, Japan, Philippines, South Korea, North Korea, Taiwan, and Vietnam. That whole area. Ships are basically getting to that area by way of the, 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 the Taiwanese Strait, the Strait of Taiwan. And, of course, if China takes over Taiwan, Taiwan only about 100 miles off of China. I mean, it's close. That's like from here to Freeport. Come on. So China's going to... You, you remember now, Taiwan used to be part of China. They branched off. Now China say, 
we're going to reunify. So we're coming back for you. Hey, you know, nobody can stop them. No man, all that talk. But Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan. Hey, you know, all that is talk. That's all that is. So we roll on. China's invasion of Taiwan can disrupt digital flows from 15 high capacity submarine cables. They will become vulnerable because China will take them over with landing stations in Taiwan running from Europe and from Asia. So U.S. technology companies has made significant investment in that infrastructure. So you want to know why the U.S. is interested in doing their thing? Because they have major investments in Taiwan and major investment in those submarine cables, which are very, very expensive. We're talking maritime people. You are listening to Maritime Matters. At this point, we move to our first break. When we return, we will engage to nice, most special guest. So please, stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Maritime Matters. At this point, as so well promised, this is the moment when we move to our lively guests. So without further ado, I reserve no hesitation in introducing tonight's guest. He hails all the way from one of the most expensive cities on earth, the great city of Nassau. Yeah, very expensive city. This cat, ladies and gentlemen, comes highly knowledgeable, in particular with historical facts on sloop building in the Bahamas over the past couple centuries. Yes, it's a fellow that, by way of intense research, literally equipped his brain with the encyclopedia of Bohemian boat builders. A walking genius, I tell you, in gaining his wealth of detailed knowledge on this topic, this brother trailed his way to the mountaintop, wrestled down the Buddha Dean and gobbled down the beetle nut. So brace yourself, people, for quite an interesting and informative maritime discussion. I am highly privileged to present to you tonight a good friend, a bohemian historian extraordinaire, the great Kendall Butler. Brother Ken, my brother, welcome to Maritime Matters. Thank you very much for your invitation. And uh, I, 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 you put me in a, in, a, in a funny position. All of these things you're saying about me. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I hope I can live up to your expectations. You are an extra. See, I spoke to you many times, and I know many people, other people spoke to you. Even coming in the night, gentlemen, I said, we find this guy with all his knowledge. So I want you to know that you are packed with knowledge, especially on this topic that we're here to deal with when it comes to boat building in the Bahamas. And, and I, I just know that. You know and I know. I know that from way back. So, Ken, okay, let's find out who you are, man. Who, who are your parents and siblings? Well... Um, <laughs> I think in the interest of time. Yeah, well, let's go straight to what schools you attended. Yes. Well, if, 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 or which part of Nassau you grew up, I don't know. Well, I am 100% Bahamian. <laughs> yeah, of course, I mean, of course, there's no That's doubt. That's number one. Number so two, which school I did, did, under, I, uh, I, I did undergraduate studies in the USA, 
graduate studies in okay. Paris, France. Right. Uh, and I was a civil servant for the whole time of my working life. I'm recently retired. And um, one of my main pastimes, of course, reading, researching, writing. And one of the subjects I researched, of course, was the history of boat builders. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, it was supposed to have been simply the history of boat builders of the Bahamas. Right. And once I started, I realized that it couldn't work. It was not possible. Wow. You could not study Bahamian history without studying the history of Bermuda and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Is that so? They are inextricably linked. We are the same people. Right. In fact... That's where we're from. Yes, in fact, okay. we Bahamians came from Bermuda first. Okay. And when the loyalists came with their slaves, mm -hmm. they met the Bermudians here okay. with their slaves and free black Bermudians. But you, right. don't, you don't hear that in, 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 in the schools or, or about the place. So we need that book to hurry up, come out so we can get that in some schools so that me, people like me and a lot of other Bahamians after me can understand the details of from whence we came. So what inspired you and motivated you to engage research in Bahamian boat building in particular? Well, to be quite honest with you, my great-great-grandfather, Isaac Monroe, mm -hmm. was a full-blooded Indian. Okay. He... Came, all we know is that he came from South America. Right. We don't know which country. Mm -hmm. Came to the Bahamas, went to Exuma, uh, a small settlement outside of Georgetown. Okay. And there he married a local young lady, and he was a shipwright. Mm -hmm. And Isaac Monroe died in 1900. Okay. And uh, he built by commission. And, in, and if you build by commission to make a living, right, it means that you were good. You have to be. And yeah. you had to otherwise, be otherwise, you wouldn't make enough money off commission. Exactly. That's exactly. excellent, man. So he just built boats for people. And when I read the history of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. I did not see where boat builders did anything uh, outstanding wow. in the development and mm -hmm. the growth of the Bahamas. And I said, something is wrong with this. Yeah. And that was where it started. And so, in fact... The development and the growth of the Bahamas came about simply because, or solely because, of the boat builders. Without them, it, nothing would have happened with this country. Right, well, right. Well, the colony, I should say, as it was then. Yeah. Well, small colony. We, we didn't have all these big things we have now. So, exactly. So, um, we didn't need all the... We, we needed boat building. And, and, and he was building boats to export? Or just no, no, building no, 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 boats no. for local consumption? Local consumption. Okay. That's excellent. Um... Were there any obstacles that you would have encountered during your research work and, and anything to slow you down or cause it very difficult for you to find out certain information? You always, you, when, when you engage in research, mm -hmm. regardless of the subject matter, you always come across persons, for whatever reason, who would have the information mm -hmm. and would refuse to share the information. Mm. Uh, sometimes you know why, and sometimes you yeah, try to figure, figure out what's why. going on. Yeah, yeah, you know. But but okay. but mostly they they were all very uh, cooperative mm -hmm. and and very forthcoming. But you had some people I had to go around the corner to get the information. <laughs> yeah, you gotta 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 do some tipping sometime and yes. taken out for lunch and. No 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 not that kind of you thing. Didn't, you I didn't have to go. That I had far. to go. I had to go to a. a Grand nephew or grand niece, oh, oh, you know, to get more to, to, get, to get around the to the person, yeah, because yes, okay. that person might have been perhaps in the eighties or nineties, right, 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 didn't right, want right. to uh, share yeah. the information. Wow. So I went to a grand nephew or grand niece mm -hmm. that I knew, uh, and, and I explained mm -hmm. the difficulty I had, and I was able to get uh, some information like that. What What's strange about those days and those people, um, Ken, is. I have heard many stories about captains on vessels that would look at a chart and then flip it upside down and nobody on that ship could touch that chart because they don't even want them to look at the chart and try to figure that out. They want everybody to depend on them. And as you know, that went on even in the civil service where some people don't want to retire and this and that. They just want to keep things, you know, obey. So where were the boats built and who built them? Well, first of all, it's not a question of where the boats were built. Mm -hmm. Boats were built wherever you had people. Oh, once you had in a population, fact, boats were being built. In fact, the main reason why settlements 
uh, continued and flourished was because you had boat builders. And you had In habits. other cases, some settlements died because they did not have boat builders. Boat builders ensured the continuation or the continuity right. of settlements because they had to go to New Providence to get certain supplies, items right. and supplies that mm -hmm. could not be had on the island. That's right. Well, they, they still they do wouldn't, that nowadays. They wouldn't starve. They wouldn't starve. They always had more oh, sufficient food. Yeah, but they, right. they need building but, material and whatnot. Yes, building materials, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and certain implements. And, and, and dry goods to make bread. We need flour. You need these type of things. So you may have them on the well, island. You bring, you, know, them in, you bring them bread, in from town. Cornbread, cornbread. I still prefer yeah, cornbread yeah, to flour well, bread. Well, cornbread was an option. <laughs> Banana bread was an option. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I know all about, 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 about options, especially when, 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 when you're on a family island, you know. So, but uh, to, to answer that question, uh, boat builders existed in all the family islands. Now, the first boat building center, there were four boat building centers in the Bahamas. Okay. The first boat building center was in Harbor Island, North Eleuthera. Wow. That was the first boat building center. On Harbor Island itself? or Harbor Island okay. itself, okay. slash North Eleuthera. Right, right. Uh, the second boat building center was in New Providence. Okay. The third boat building center was in Abaco. Right. Now, it was shared between five settlements in Abaco. It was between Green Tidal Key, Marsh Harbor, Hope Town, Manowaki, and of course Cherokee Sound. Cherokee Those, Sound as well. Oh yes, they built. Oh yes, they wow. built. Okay. From Schooner Sound down, mm -hmm. but those five settlements in Abaco mm -hmm. made Abaco the third boat building center of the Bahamas, and the fourth and final boat building center uh, of the Bahamas was in Andros. Oh yeah. Based, I don't know what happened to my based, hometown? based in Mangrove Key. Hello. And centered, of course, in Lisbon Creek. Yes, 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 yes. But you know what, what, what I would want to say here um, about all of what you said? Mm -hmm. What comes to my mind is people always say cities were made because they had the biggest natural harbor worldwide. Why is people always ask the question, why they choose Nassau or New Providence and it's so small? Why didn't pick one of them big islands? Because Nassau had the biggest natural harbor in the country, still does. Right? And the other, the other places you, well, Elizabeth Harbor ain't biggest Nassau harbor. The other places you, 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 you mentioned, right? <laughs> I know what you want to say. You're wrong, you're <laughs> wrong. Elizabeth Harbor is bigger than Nassau okay. Harbor. Okay. And it's better. And especially, well, not only is it better. Mm -hmm. But they don't ever have to dredge, to, to, to dredge. Like how they, every so many years, they have to dredge the mm -hmm. harbor, Nassau Harbor. You don't have to dredge in, in, in uh, Georgia. No, they, they, only, they only dredge Nassau Harbor because the cruise ships get bigger and they want more. But the, but only the, one area in Nassau Harbor is dredged. That's where the cruise ships coming in. But, and the reason why they do that is because the cruise ships keep getting larger. And the last ones they dredged was for the Oasis class, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they didn't have enough space for the cruise ship to turn when it comes in. Um, because if, if the cruise ships are, are so very maneuverable now, they, they can spin on a dime, they could do it, but they still need the room because of the size. That's the reason why they dredged. They didn't dredge because Nassau Harbor wasn't deep enough. No, that is not the point. The fact is they had to dredge. That is the fact. And in Exuma, they don't have to dredge. That's well, the fact, too. Let Exuma take away, says. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get dredged. No, 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 no. Oasis will dredge it out. Oasis will dredge it out. No, no, we can handle Oasis. We can handle Oasis. Okay. No, but, 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 but like I was saying, I'm, I'm, and, and Elizabeth Harbor, same thing, right? Mm. It, it's, it's, it's the reason why Georgetown would be the capital. It's because of Elizabeth Harbor. It had the biggest natural harbor. Right. Right? And, 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 and ex what you were saying, if you look at what you were saying, you started with, 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 with a big natural harbor, um, which is, is, is a very big one, um, um, just, just Harbor Island. You see how big the harbor is, right? And then you go to, 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 to um, Abaco, which has a huge harbor where all those keys that you call are connected to that big harbor, Right? Come to Nassau, not a big harbor. Mangrove Key. Well, Lisbon Creek is kind of... It, it's shallow. It's shallow, but it's big. Now you can remember the size of these boats back then. Well, I, it may I, be shallow for boats today, yes. but boats back then could have gotten in and out of there. Mind right. you, they may play the tide, but they get in and out. Right, right. Right? right, right. So, 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 so you're right on track, my friend. And 
I I'm call us play. I'm I'm I'm. We gonna open the lines probably in the next ten minutes. I I have to let my guest, brother Kendall Butler, get out some of this information before you all start disrupting us because this is good stuff and I need to get into some of this. But f just be advised that we gonna open the, the the lines in about ten minutes, and you can call. But we still got a lot to cover. When you when you said something about uh, boats being able to access the harbor without the harbor having to be dredged to accommodate them, what came to mind was the fact that these boats, these, these uh, boats that, that transported freight and passengers, mm -hmm. boats that everyone would have heard of who perhaps would be in their, perhaps in their, what, 30s, 40s and up. I think, these boats... I think it might have gone a little low, but yeah, because, I mean, my children ain't around with them boats, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I am talking about like Captain Roberts, the Noel Roberts, the Noel Gary Roberts, Roberts, yeah, all of the Abaco Dundas. boats. Yeah. No, they're not Abaco boats. The Noel Roberts? They are Mars not. Abba. No, 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 I mean that's that's the route the, the mail route they took. No, 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 no. Hear what I'm gonna say. Hear what I'm gonna say. Okay. The Captain Roberts, Noel Roberts, Gary Roberts, mm -hmm. Lady Dundas, Liberty, etc. Mm -hmm. They were built in Harbor Island. That's the point. Oh wow. They were built in Harbor Island. Right. And um these Mailboats, as they were called, mm -hmm. they transported freight and passengers. And right. the reason why they called them mailboats was mm -hmm. because the government paid them a set amount of money to carry the official mail. Yeah, because they had no internet then. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so they were called no, the mailboat. Yeah, the yeah. mail, mail. And, and you know, I had, I had you, you, you must know Captain Edwin Staler. Oh. Okay, he did my very first show, he and I. Right, and he was talking about when the very first vessel had an engine installed. Prior to that, it was only sail, and he said it took them sometimes three weeks to get from Nassau to to Betsy to Bay yeah. to make one. And 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 I found it kind of fascinating, but but that's the reality of things. And 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 you know today we see these what we call Haitian sloops. Coming, well, they don't come to Nassau Harbor no more, but they used to be crowded. You mean the little sail? I remember, I remember. No engines. Mm -hmm. And they come from Haiti, and then sometimes they take days, sometimes they take weeks, according to what the winners do it. Exactly. Right? And those are what we had back then. But building <coughs> those things are not, are not easy to do. I mean, if you, well, anyway, we can move on to the faster ones in a little while, but let me. <laughs> let me let you, let me let you keep going. Who were some of the families known for boat building? In the Bahamas. Well, I got a friend before. I got a good friend. Mm -hmm. He used to be the, the best player in the, in the Bahamas in volleyball for five straight years, Oral Hudson. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He told I, I me his know, granddaddy I know, I know Oral. was one of the better boat builders. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let me let you stick to who were some of the families that, that were really renowned for building boats back in the day. But let, let, me, let me refer to, to Oral, uh, to, to Oral's uh, grandfather. His name was Wilfred Wilfred Hudson. Wilfred Hudson. Yes. Okay. And he was a boat builder. Uh, and he, you know, one of his sizable boats right. was Big Bertha. Oh, he, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so he built a boat and named it Big Bertha. This one is of one of the boats. bigger ones he built. Yes, Big Bertha. That's why he named it Big Bertha. Yeah. Okay, so he really was a good builder. Uh, or I'll, or I'll, or I'll kind of know what he was telling me when he told me his father, his grand, great grandfather was. No, grandfather. His grandfather. Yeah. Used to build boats. Yeah, that's very good. I mean, that's not so far fetched because all and I and said and yeah, that's that's excellent. So uh, let's talk about some of these other boat building families. Uh, well, from 1648 to the present time, mm -hmm. there were 32, 32 outstanding boat building families in the Bahamas. 32. 32. Wow. And these outstanding boat building families mm -hmm. included uh, families from every island. Every single island? From every class. Ragged island? From every class. Okay. From every race. Wow. In fact, the boat building industry and profession was the one industry and profession where color did not hold you back. Wow. Didn't matter. Once you could build a boat, you could build a boat and you respected for that. Exactly. And that, that, was, that was, I found that very outstanding. Beautiful. Because... In every other area, you had to be uh, of European descent. 
yeah to have to clout. make to make a, a you know success of your life or, or yes, career yes. unless they wanted you to unless they helped you up or one yes, one yes. of those types helped you up yeah. yeah. yes so both building kind of level the playing field well yes god given as far as as far as respecting people is concerned exactly beautiful now I, I I will quickly go through. Yeah, we need uh, to hear somebody's family names because I I know some people want to call in and find out if 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 if, if they hear their family name they want to know which one of my uncles that was. <laughs> great grand uncle or great 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 grand uncle. Oh, indeed, yes. indeed. Or grandfather. But the point is the Albury family of Manowaki, mm -hmm. Abaco, the Bain family of Masons Bay, Acklands. The Bevans family of Hunters. Boy, the Bain family of Masons Bay. The Charlton family be of Abraham's Bay, Megwana. Uh, the Cooper family of Golden Grove, High Rock, Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. The Cox family of New Providence. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, the Cox family in Acklands. Are not, they're not from Acklands. They're from New Providence. Or oh, they went to Acklands afterwards. Timothy they Cox. started out in New Providence. Timothy Cox, mm -hmm. the fifth. I think Timothy Cox the fifth. I think Lester Cox. Name. My my good friend Lester Cox is gonna to have to have something to say about that tonight. <laughs> well, he can't change the facts. Okay, those are he may want to accept it. Those are the researching the facts. facts. Okay. He will have to go and change birth dates and place of births and all the rest of it. Okay. But the point is that's the Cox family of New Providence. We go to the mm -hmm. Dames family of Pure Gold Andrews, right. the Duncombe family of Stanley Creek Andrews, the Edgecombe family of Stanley Creek Andrews. The Enius family of Harbour Island, the Forbes family of Forbes's Hill, uh, Exuma, Deep Creek, Andrus, same family. Deep Creek, Andrus? Yeah. The, Forbes? This, this Forbes family, they mm -hmm. came from Forbes's Hill, Exuma, and right. they relocated to, to Deep Creek. Oh, they relocated to Deep Creek. And they built in Exuma, and they built in Deep so, Creek. So the Forbes and Drake Hill, I thought they were the oldest set of Forbes and Andrus. Well, anyway, let's go. Let's go it's on. one family. Okay, same family. All right. Uh, the Forsyth family of Rumkey Andrus. I mean, sorry, of Rumkey uh, slash Andrus. They sound kind of white. Forsyth? Yes, they are local whites. Okay. Conky Joe's. I said local whites. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. The Hannah Hasty Times family of Ackland, Crooked oh, right. Island. That's, 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 and that's the Honorable Glennis and Oshie always talk about the Hasty Yes, Hasty yes. Hannah. They, they are. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Heel family of Waterkey, Grand Bahama. The okay. Kerr family of Mangrove Key Andrus, uh, right. that would be the people in Lisbon Creek. I know, sir. I know. I know. We had we had one of them, Wenzel Kerr, on the defense force, and and his family is from Lisbon Creek. So I'm sure he's part of that that train. Uh, the Knowles family of Mangrove Bush, Long Island. The right. No family of Green Tidal Key Abaco. Okay. The Malone family of Hope Tong Elbow Key Abaco. Mm -hmm. The Martin family of Eight Mile Rock, Grand Bahama. The McBride family of Moores Island Abaco. The McDonald family of Bennett's Harbor Cat Island. Really? The Miller family of Kong Song Andrus. The McPhee family of Black Point Andrus. Mm. The Pinder family of Pinder Spring Grand Bahama. The Roll slash Rollins family of Bimini. The Roberts family of Harbor Island. The Russell family of Abaco. The Saunders family of Bimini. The Simmons family of South Master Point Andrus. The Smith family of Richmond Hill Exuma. The Wimses family of Sandy Creek Andrus. And finally, the Woodside family of Stafford Creek, Andrus. So let me let me ask you because I I didn't hear anything about Rumkey. I didn't hear anything about Inagua. Forsyth. From Inagua. Rumkey. Okay. Who from Inagua? You had boat builders there. Well, but you didn't have an outstanding. Because you say all the islands. I was listening to see, to see if I could miss no, any no, out. The, those what were about the Berry Islands? No, wait a minute. Those were the outstanding boat building families. Right. The Bahamas. Right. And there weren't in every island. Okay, so 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 other islands had boat builders, but they were not as outstanding. No, no, they probably no, built for them, no, their no, own no, self. No, 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 no. <laughs> Individuals might have been outstanding, right? But, but the family families. was not outstanding. It was not a continuous profession that became a legacy in the family. Okay, all right. I I with you. I with you. So we got three minutes before we open the line. What was the cultural impact of building boats locally? Believe it or not, the development of the Bahamian culture was directly as a result of the boat builders. The homogeneity of Bahamian culture, the sameness of Bahamian culture. Mm -hmm. Because these boats went from island to island, they say from island to island, they developed a similarity in dressing, a similarity in music, 
a similarity in cooking, a similarity in speaking in a general way, and of course, a similarity in attitudes, values, and beliefs and practices in a general sense. And together, these all together formed the Bahamian identity. And but, only because of the boat builders who built the boats mm -hmm. to enable people to go around and, you know, mesh with each, with each other. Okay, I'm um, Kendall. Brother Ken, yes. you, you, you mentioned in your statement a minute ago, that same f statement that you made, that boats went from, uh, from island to island. They didn't all come to Nassau from that island and go back to, like mail boats do today? No, I no, understand. I, I, what, what I, when I said that, yes, Nas, well, Nassau, well, Nassau or New Providence was the focal point. Okay. But at the same time, mm -hmm. they went from island to island as and when they pleased. Sometimes because they traded. Well, I was just about to say that. Oh. Sometimes okay. mm -hmm. uh, they would perhaps take 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 Andrus. Mm -hmm. Andrus used to burn the trees. The pine trees of coal. Mm -hmm. They would come to New Providence, and if they found out that someone from some other island came, and the market was saturated with coal, they weren't going to take their coal back to Andrus. So they would sail from here. Somewhere they would else. go to Eleuthera, right, to drop off. And if they got perhaps about 30 40 percent of their coal sold in Eleuthera, they weren't going to take the rest of that back. They might sail all the way to. Bimini, Tiberi Islands. Cat Island. Cat, uh, no, not Cat Island. Maybe Abaco. From Elutra? Abaco. I'm just west. telling you, Abaco yeah. is Cat Island. Oh, yeah, Abaco is right up there, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see? And this is how they would have gone from island to island. Okay. Also, certain islands that produced a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and did not produce much corn and potatoes. Right. They would exchange, sometimes not with money, they would just barter. Yeah, because because I remember, like they say, Exome used to grow a lot of onions and this and that. Right. Cat Island used to grow this and that. So 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 they would have different crops that they could go and trade with each other. Right, that, um, and that happened. And that's, that's, trading was was a way of life back back then. It eh? was a necessity because you didn't have money. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you listening to Maritime Matters. Our very special guest tonight is Mr. Kendall. Butler, who is the guru on boat building in the Bahamas over the past couple centuries. If you have any questions on that, please feel free to call. If you have any Maritime Matters questions, we would be free to, to engage you. But let's try and focus on boat building in the Bahamas. We are going to open the lines right now. The number to call is 326 Eight two five five. I say again, three two six eight two five five. Lines are open and waiting for you. <coughs> Meantime, we're gonna just keep pressing on with my good friend and guest, Mr. Ken Butler, as he enlightens us on some of his wealth of knowledge in local boat building over the past couple centuries. Now, I I think. Uh... I, I, well, from 1648 to the present time. From 1648 to the present time. Right. That is when this oh, research... We got calls already. Look, boy, Ken, I know if you're in trouble tonight or I'm in trouble, but we'll, let's, let's put, put, stick a pin and, and, and get the first one. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, you're live on Maritime Matters Caller. Thank you very much for calling in. Hi, how are you doing, sir? I'm in top shape, my friend, and getting better all the time. How are you? Uh, listen, if I complain, I'll be ungrateful. That's what I'm talking about, my friend. You got a question for my good guest tonight, or you got another maritime matter to, to, to discuss? No, I, I heard you were calling some boat builders' names, right? Yes, sir. I didn't hear a gentleman by the name of William Pratt from Count San Andra. William Pratt from Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I know the late uh, Deacon William Pratt, and, yeah. and I also knew his, his wife, uh, Reverend Mrs. Pratt, who was the pastor of the Church of God of Prophecy there. And yeah. he was a boat builder. 
No, 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 undoubtedly. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you that uh, I did not call individuals. I did not call individuals. Uh, no, those names, those... Family, that's, what I, that's what I was listening for. Oh, no, those names that I called were the names of outstanding boat building families. Now, individuals, that, that's a different matter. But I do have uh, the late Deacon Pratt, uh, and, and I, respect, I respected him highly. Uh, one, of, one, of, okay. one of my uh, complaints to him was, those sons you have, how many of them building? <laughs> building boats. <laughs> so, um, I think only one ventured off into um, in the boat building, but he didn't venture too deep into it. All right. But, but let history be told that he was the first, the first boat builder from the north, in fact, from the Andros area, that ever built a smart boat and put a motor in it. Oh, yeah. He's, he's coming to recent times. Yes. Yes, sir. I see. Well, I, I sir, I, I thank you for the information. I, I did not know that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's... Yeah. That, well, by far, the first. Okay, Carla, we appreciate that call so much. And, um, yes, your your grandfather was one of the one of, one of of the listed ones, but none of the names that was called. So thank you very much for pointing that out to us. Who told you I said he was my grandfather? I thought I that's thought I thought that's what no, that's Oh, he says. Father. Father. Oh, my apology, my brother. I, <laughs> no, no, nobody <laughs> was my grandfather, but true. <laughs> is this Sammy? No, this this the one they call Manny. All right. Manny. Well, so but the next time I I uh, go Andrews North Andrews, I, I I'm gonna look you up. All right, yes, sir. Okay, Manny. Right, thank you yeah. very much for calling, in, my friend. No problem. Right. Calling on Maritime Matters. Good evening to you. Yes, sir. Good evening to you and your guests. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I would just like to mention individually, and I want to also want to compliment uh, Mr. Butler in his beginning statement when he said you cannot study the history of the Bahamas unless inclusive of the Native and the Pigs and Gigas Islands. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you, sir. And I, I want to mention an individual named my great Great grandfather, he used to call him old Ben Forbes. He was one of the boat builders in Grand Turk. Oh, Grand Turk. Did in you go Grand to Turk? Grand Turk? Yeah. That's correct. Sir, uh, I have the Forbes, I have all of the boat builders of uh, Tykes and Caicos Islands here, right at my fingertips. And uh, there were many Forbes boat builders. And of course, I came prepared to talk about uh, the boat builders of the Bahamas, but I, I, I could certainly. Uh, check it out and and tell you uh, whether or not. Uh, what, what did you say his first name was, sir? His first name was Ben Forbes. His wife's name ben. was Mariah Cox. Okay. Ben Forbes and Mariah Cox. Ben Forbes. Ben. B -E -N. Yeah, Ben. Right. Okay. But, um, so we'll research. Uh, we'll research. I, say, I mainly want to compliment you on the fact that you went as far to the root that is, the native, the Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas. There is a deep rooted connection historically between those three islands. That is correct. But to be quite honest with you, sir, uh, we all we all have our origin in Bermuda. All of us. Especially the Forbes. All of us. Yes, sir. All of us. As a matter of fact, if you look at the surnames in Bermuda, those names are repeated in the Bahamas and in the Tykes and Caicos Islands. That and, is so correct. And I will all I will also tell you that um, when the Bermudians came here in 1648 and, and got shipwrecked on the northern end of Eleuthera, they came and they repopulated the Bahamas after the Bahamas was without population for a little bit over 112 years. At the same time, they also went down to Tykes and Caicos and they repopulated Tykes and Caicos as well. And okay. these these are the same people. Now the the, the you only hear about the loyalists, but the yeah. loyalists came uh, in 1778, 1779, and when they came, they met the uh, white Bermudians here with their slaves and the free blacks from Bermuda because they felt they had too many blacks in Bermuda and they were shipping them out to the Bahamas and the Tykes and Caicos. Well, again, you know, Old Ben Forbes was one of the pioneer boat builders in Grand Turk. 
And in fact, the Forbes that you spoke of in Forbes and like some more, and, uh, and I was originally there from an area in Quick, Quick, and Quick was called Bottom Quick, because I'm a Forbes, my name is Benjamin Forbes. All right. And I was able to collect from about, in documentation, I have five generations of who and when and who married who and this and that. But old Ben Forbes is one of the pioneer boat builders of Land but let me let me tell you. So I I just opened my my uh, research head. notes, <laughs> and I just look. Uh, I see here. Um, uh, uh, I see here uh, in Bambara, a, a Steve Forbes in Bambara. Yes, sir. Uh, I I, and I'm I'm trying. See, I didn't I didn't expect I didn't expect to deal with t with Texas and Caicos, <laughs> and. Uh, and I am trying to. I see a Erlen Forbes, correct. Uh, John Forbes, correct. Uh, Cornelius Forbes, they call him Knee Forbes, correct. Carlin Urias Forbes, correct. John Marcus Forbes, and uh, you have one. Hadley Forbes, <laughs> you have one. Nathaniel Forbes, they call him Daddy. Yeah, but you, but you need to do Mister Daddy, and uh, and do your own, Mister Daddy. They, you know, because it's, it's a very interesting and in the history of those three islands are very seldom talked about. Well, to be quite honest with you, sir, uh, the people who would know this information, for example, take Dr. Keith Tinker. Correct. Uh, you know him? Yes, sir. Dr. Keith Tinker, and uh, you have Dr. Chris Curry. Uh, uh, these persons... They were professors of history at the University of the Bahamas. Now, they would have this information, but they're in the university, and you need this information in the, in the high schools. Disseminated, yeah. That's right. That is correct. And I, I have to tell you, sir, that I did spend quite a bit of time in Tykes and Caicos uh, doing research there uh, in the archives as well as... Uh, dealing with the elderly, talking to the elderly. And I must tell you, sir, that uh, I got a lot of support and a lot of assistance, and I appreciate the time I spent there. And you know, um, good show, uh, Ms. Rose. People that I just look forward every Tuesday to just turn in this book. This book the second time volume. Yeah. We... The first time I got to hear your show. We appreciate you so much, sir. Just, just, just keep listening. We're gonna keep, um, you know, bringing, bringing our best out on the show, and and you never know. Someday we may have you as a guest. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm one of the younger folks, but uh, I, I've been around the old people, so uh, I was able to stop and talk to some of the younger people and get, I get old McCoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 Bermuda relocated to Grand Turk. I have a J.C. Cresson from uh, Grand Turk. I have a Lewis Beckford, B-E-C-K, Beckford, Inagua, relocated to Grand Turk. I have a Kenneth Manuel, uh, uh, Grand Turk. Those were the only four boat builders I have uh, for Grand Turk. But this Ben yeah. Forbes, uh, could, could I... Could, could I Get your perhaps your number after you uh, uh, after you come off the air. Could yeah, I, I can. Let the, the producer can can take his number once we get through. Yeah, please, please, please. yeah. All right, sir. So, thank you very much again for calling. And uh, hold on, tell we just we just just hold a line, and the producer will get on to you so that he can get your number, and and, and he would give it to to Mister Button. He'll he'll be calling you to follow up. Thank you very much for the information. Well done. Keep up the good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We have another call on the line. Caller, you on Maritime Matters. You're alive. Hello. Good night, Captain Dan. How you doing? Hey, my brother. Hey, everything cool, brother. Seven. How are you? I'm uh, okay, man. Hey, hey. When you open up your show and think you official, you know, you official, man. <laughs> you official, man. I try to give it. I try to put my best foot forward, my friend. Um, that that always forward. You know how we roll. You know that. But good night to you again. Thank you. But you can also lose the thing. I mean, it's like, I ain't telling you no lie. You can't just spirit and thing and thing. 
Because me and the girl, put me, I, 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 I put they get break up and use the go on my name, you know. <laughs> That's right. You tell me, you used to build the, the, little, the little boats to race on the water and, 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 and someone break up your boat. <laughs> I'm not getting there. I, 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 I tell the man, I tell him, I tell him these little, I started building like the, the little Kamalami boats and things. Yes. The Kamalami tree, right? The power was going to escape you, right? Yes. And then, then, I, then I graduated to, to using like, like, um, uh, like lumber and, and paneling and they can like, also got like, like a sort of cat, like almost like a, a tr- like a catamaran. Have a house. Yeah, you have superstructure and everything on your boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and okay. you know what? I see a lot with using like a land and my weather was set and everything. I just go over there in the, in the, in the shallow water, man, and that would be wrapped into. I say, boy. Yeah, man. You you got the touch. That's that's how you and start I went, off. I went on to build like a, a, a like a, a ten foot thingy, and I had the house. I had, I had all, all the ribs and everything. Now you getting ready to play. I told you that story, right? Yes, 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 yes. But I mean, like, right now, and I even mentioned to you um, uh, a, a show where I, I say, my right now, that they, I need to grab some of these kids because I'm a master carpenter. All right, it's too good, we can all that. Oh, really? Oh, really? So so you, you used to do joinery? Yeah, man. You know, you got carpenters and you get joineries. That's that's what I was told. I said, when you're a joiner, boy, you 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 can't Yeah, and I mean, I'm bragging on that. But I, 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 <laughs> I I I I I I I I I I I I know some stuff. Well, I told you, I told you that I'm gonna bring the guru of boat building in the Bahamas on the show, and here he is. He's here with us right now. But you want to check to see if any seminars. Listen to them, but I'm doing a lot. This kind thing, because I mean, it's like if only I was there to talk with Mr. Bellan. Because I mentioned you, like even these skits and things that he's doing, like going for the guitar and this and that, right? Right. I think it's there, right? And they think mm-hmm. everything, right? But you know what? It's come from a different direction, you know, because everything is based on equilibrium. And then you want speed, and then you got to be the center of gravity. All right? That's so right. Like, they don't plan them like that. Yeah, because you start talking about the G, the G point and, 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 yeah, I, I, well, you know, I did a little shipbuilding while I was training to be a, 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 a naval officer in Dartmouth in England. Yeah. Um, we had to, we had to, to, to speak about stability and, and, and where the G-force is in the ship and, 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 and the lower it is, the more sturdy the ship is and, and all that type of thing. But I, I never get into no building nothing. So if you're taking that into consideration... Building, I could build that. I could build anything. Listen here. Even, even kites, right? I go up and kites and all the world is going to kite and body and all that, you know. Because, I mean, like, all of them have to be aerodynamic. Just one go through water, one go through air. Yeah, but now them fellas, them fellas back in the day... Them, them fellas back in the day when they built kite, yeah, you couldn't touch them fellas. You gotta be kidding, bro. <laughs> go beyond that. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. The first kite I built, I wound up with my two sons, right? Uh-huh. For four hours, big man, and my kids, they run up and down, and they can't get the kite in the air. Me? Oh, you know, kite can make me what, beat me. He beat me. Yeah. You know? It but took it, me eight hours to build one kite, but one day sometimes, tea kite I built them with no tail. Everyone's got a tail, and they kite for violence, you know? And you, your kite, your kite, kite had no them. tail? Right? And they can become fast, they can become fluke, they can do anything. I wow. can, I can, I can fly them and train. Yeah, that's great. These man. foot kites, okay? Two at a time. And they, they go and they, they, they dance and whatever they wanted to do. But do you do you know that the same way those kites catch the wind or the wind catch the kite? Uh, so and, and, and you, pull it, you do know the same thing applies to sailboats with the sail? That's exactly. But, but see, what are they telling The bottom line still is mm-hmm. the aerodynamic. What, what does it do when the wind hit it? Yes. So that would be the same way. Yeah. And guess what? This, the, the, I'm talking about the foundation structure of a boat is the hull. Yes. Or the heels, okay? Yeah. All right, and, and there are all the rich groups and that. I mean, it, it's different forms of that. You could go fire the glass and whatever, but you go in the conventional way and think you mm-hmm. wouldn't rest on that. Yeah. Okay. And back in those days, those those guys, we, 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 we're getting ready soon to speak about the fastest boats that were built in the Bahamas. You know, you could, you could have the best sail, but if your boat ain't designed, to really cut through the water yeah, like the other one? Yeah, then you, 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 you it ain't going to be as fast. The right they put a boat to be fair to the truth, like the water like an arrow, man. That's right, that's right. Yeah, so, but I mean, like, mm-hmm. but guess what, let me show you something. So, when these boats get in the thing too, like that, right? Mm-hmm. Guess what, what is going to be right it's on the left? Got to be balanced and deep, deeper than that. Yeah. That's why well, you're doing the hell and everything. You, 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 you take it one side, take it in the neck wider and all that. You, you, that ain't going to work. But do, have you have you ever? Have you, you ever, have you ever like, sailed? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I would do some boat building, but have you so ever like, been on any those 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 I'm, sailing boats that 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 sail in regattas locally? You know, they got weights in the bottom of them and all that I stuff. Know, like, they, 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 they got a bunch of lead in them. 
Yeah, man. When they build them, and, and I think they they got, they see the fella from Long Island build good boats, the ones who did build a legacy and those boats. And then they had a couple from Ragged Island, Uncle Boss, and and, and couple. And uh, don't forget Exomina, because that's where the great Raleigh Gray and, and, and those guys are, or the Staniel Key and Black Point, and, and they all they all build good boats. Yeah, and they, they, all, they all had their times to do some winning. Like, but listen, but the bottom line is, yes, without, like, anything you do in life, so many times then, it's all depends on keeping and how far you carry it. You could build and build and build. You could build for years and yeah, you good. But you know what? When you see when you see really good, then everyone is standing their head and be flattered, okay? Yeah, man. I mean, so how would how would we'll, we'll, we'll rock on the waters and everything? I mean, those buildings, even when we look at the technology of building those now, they got square, the, the, the bow square now. That's right. Yeah, that's 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 well, you got to remember they're independent on the wind no more. They got these big, powerful engines. So yeah, in some yeah. cases, they get there. When we come back, we the point, you know. When we build anything in life, yeah. we got to try to utilize the elements and things that have to operate. Man. That's anything right. Other than that, of mm-hmm. That's right. So do you have any questions for our esteemed guest tonight, Brother Simonet? I mean, I'm flattered. Any direct right? questions? Right, <laughs> yeah, this guy, this guy is a walking encyclopedia, man. Yeah, yeah, man, because I mean, like, he seems to know all, all, all of the boat builders and things, and like, I wouldn't mind even, like, mm-hmm. like, talking with the gentleman, uh, talking about not on the show. Good evening, and good the, evening, Mr. Simlet, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm all right, sir. Good, I was sitting here listening and learning from you, uh, <laughs> learning okay, about you, learning about you. Yes, sir. And uh, you are Simlet from Rock Song, are you? Yes, sir. You know, you know, you know Brad Field, right? Well, listen, let me tell you. I can give you the history of that, sir. Just to tell me, man, I can talk about what he said. I ain't going to mention that. No, let me tell you. No, no, no. Listen, listen. While it existed, I was the vice chairman of the Simlet family reunion. Yeah? My grandmother was a Simlet cousin. <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't get that. I said my grandmother was a Simnet cousin. <laughs> All right, I mean, oh man, and, and my great grandfather. Listen here, and my great grandfather, my great grandfather. Listen, my great grandfather was Alfred Simnet of Vince's Bay. Oh. Okay, so am um, I? Uh, you, you know, Ken, Ken Simnet too, right? And all that. I know quite a few of them. Uh, okay, some okay. of them I know by face. Uh, a few of them I know by names. Yeah, yeah. But the next time, the next time I am um, in Rock Song, sir. No, I, no, I, I, no he live in Nassau. You in Nassau? He grew up, he, he grew up between I Nassau. Know, he's going to something. All right, well, I, I'll, I'll get your contact from from. Glenn. I have his contact. Yet. No, I know. I know. I used to have it, but we we let the producer yeah, take I, it. I, I, we, I can, I can live with the producer. Yeah, he well, once I put you on hold, he'll take it. Well, we gotta move to break now, brother Simon. Thank you for always listening to Mara Madison. Ma- Ma- like, like when you open your show and thing, yeah, you carrying on loose as the goose. I'm talking about you, very professional, <laughs> and I mean it's like you're well trained and and you just I mean like you got it, man. It's like you ain't feeling for nothing. But you, know, that, you know to bring your guests on. You bring your guests on. Who's but listen, Mr. 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 Simlet, before you go, before you before you go, before you go, yeah, uh, Reverend Lorenzo Simlet. Uh, was was one of the more well known boat builders of uh, Acklands, okay. a settlement called Anderson. Okay, and he okay. he built he built a number of the what you call the white boats, boats that okay. would have been like twenty seven feet and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then okay. of course, this individual was a Simnet from Rock Song. Um, he died before nineteen hundred. Uh, and, I never, and I never listen, listen. And I never found any reference to him in the birth or the death records. But his name was Charles Simlet, uh-huh. and he built from schooners on down. And some of his boats were registered. And uh-huh. so, when the government registers you as a boat builder, yeah, I, I don't need to verify that because that's, that's right. your profession. <laughs> I, I mean, you make me feel so bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you feel bad because guess what? I mean, as a building man, all right, and we are, I talk about my little awesome builder, right? The rock on the next, right? But, but I mean, like, both. I can build my mind and a manifest it. I, I don't care what it is. I put things in my mind and do it. All right? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I mean, like, both building, I guess it's something what I always wanted to do. And like I mentioned to Mr. Bain, like, to, 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 to grab, like, about 100 kids who are interested in just learning yeah. something. Well, that's your passion. Hands that, on. That's your passion, and we can find a way to make that happen, my friend. You know, I'm serious for that, man, because, I mean, yeah. you know what? That, I mean, that, that change a whole future for plenty of people, because guess what? The manifestation that is great, because guess what? For now, you know the bill, you know, 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 you
they do it in the cold is out to sea. And then we get their money, food, whatever they need, come back to the building, whatever they can take in the territory. Other people into it because once they get it, their friends and all that won't be around that and be a part of it. Man, I tell you, man, it's even in this country. Absolutely. Because the Fernandes and all these islands and things, man. I'm telling you. Okay, brother. Well, brother, Simon, I can run to the break. I can put you on hold. I can put you on hold for the producer to take your number. Um, so that yeah, 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 Ken yeah, yeah, yeah. could give you a call. And keep calling, man. I love it. And, 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 and thank you very much. Yeah, but you know who will call you next, though? Well, I ain't sure yet. We can see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enjoy. Okay, hold, hold the line. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back on Maritime Matters. My special guest for the night, Mr. Kendall Butler. Just, he's got the room on fire, people. He is just enlightening us with history after history. The guy is a walking encyclopedia, like I tell you. And the numbers, the calling, if you want to get in on this, we only got 20 minutes left, so we roll it. 326 82 Five five, you're listening to Maritime Matters. Now, brother Ken, you know um, <clears throat> all this boat building was the way of life in the Bahamas back in the day. If you're a great big um, boat builder, it's something like how back in the Bible with Nimrod them. If, if you're a great hunter, everybody got to know you because you're a judge. So if you could have built the best boat, everybody wherever you go, they praising you and they looking up to you, and because boating was life. Boating was life, trading, fishing, all the rest of that you need, boats, back in those days. So, what about politics back then, where boat building was concerned? What, what was the political impact of local boat building? Well, the impact of boat builders. There is a chapter in, 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 in my uh, manuscript. But the politics now? The... Politics and boat building. Political right. and economic impact of boat builders. Great, great. They were perhaps the backbone of the opposition, of the opposition to the status quo as it then existed. Okay. And the reason why they were the backbone of the opposition to the status quo as it then existed, uh, and I'm talking about from 1953 coming forward, mm-hmm. Uh, was because they could not be intimidated. Right. They could use the boats that they built, Mm -hmm. which they owned, to come and go as they please to New Providence. They could go and, of course, reap from the sea titles, uh, fishes, uh, conks. Right. And, of course, they would also have their farms going on. And so... They could not be intimidated, and they could not be, of course, controlled. Mm -hmm. Consequently, they were a fit for the, I guess you would say, the PLP when it was in its infancy. It was a natural fit because they were fighting for their social, political, and economic rights. uh, And, of course, they themselves, of course, wanted these rights Mm -hmm. because they wanted their children uh, to have a better life or right, an easier right, life than right, they had. Right. That's right. That's and so right. it was a natural fit. Mm-hmm. And um, prior to that, before 1953, you had individuals who stood up to the system. Okay. Boat builders, you're talking about? Or? Yeah, they stood okay. up to the system and said, look, I will not uh, sell my children's future to right. you just right. to get some liquor, maybe some food. Or some money? No, 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 I won't do that. There were some who stood up to, uh, to, to the powers that be at that time. Mm-hmm. But it became more focused, more organized, and 
I can say with a degree of pride, a large degree of pride, and you, sh you can hold your head up with this one, uh, Andrus was, of course... Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> My, but did they, did they build fishing boats as well back then? Of course. So these, these were multi-purpose boats, or, or you build a fishing boat for fishing, no, and, no, no, and, no, no, and, no, and a mail boat had, for, for free had, trading? No, 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 no. Um, you had two types of vessels. Mm -hmm. A vessel could be a smart boat mm -hmm. or it could be a sloop. Right. A sloop would not have a well. Okay. The smart boat would have a well. Oh, that's why they call it smart boat? Yes. So it couldn't be a smart boat unless it had a well. Exactly. Oh, my granddaddy had a boat with a well on Porter Ski Dog back in the day. Daddy, he, he, he owned it and, and, and he was a fisherman. He was one of the best fishermen in the world. Thomas Edwin, I can tell you, boy, because... I, I was told by some men that was around in his days that when he see him use the left hand and he they, they, they had to, they used to do something with the crawfish from in the boat. Mm -hmm. They they strike, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Something they tickle him first and then strike. They say he never miss. And when he come back in with his with his dinghy, he would have like three times as much seafood than any other boat that went out in that fleet of fishermen. I see. Yeah. Oh I could brag about that. Well, I, I, I was going to I, I thought I'd get that in. I, I, I was going <laughs> to But he brag. couldn't build the boats, but he could handle the boats, and he yeah. owned one of those smacks. All right. Um, I was going to crack you a joke, but I can't crack you uh, that joke on air. We'll talk about my, that afterwards. Because my, my Cat Island friends would kill me. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a hairburn and he's from Cat Island. Yeah, well, so is my granddaddy. He's migrated to, to Mangrove Key, but he's, he's out of Cat Island also. Right. Yeah. I can leave that right there. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk about that one later. Yes. But yeah, so it was smacks and it was schooners, sloops. No, no, no. You had the vessels. Right. Could either be smart. Right. A smart boat, which would have a bell, mm -hmm. or it could be a sloop. Right. No bell. Okay. No. But uh, it's the few, same, same hull, same type. No, boat. no. The reason you would call it a vessel was because it could carry freight and passengers. Okay. Whether it was a sloop or a mm -hmm. smart boat, it could carry both freight and passengers. And it could also travel. It was big enough to travel to the different islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And incidentally, you just didn't build a boat and travel to the different islands. Your boat had to be approved. It had to, yes, it had so to. So you had to get it registered? Not necessarily registered, but it had to be inspected and approved. But, but they didn't have no, no laws then, eh? They had persons, known boat builders, mm -hmm. who would, once they say that boat is capable, right. and that was it. So it wasn't no written law. Obviously, because the Port Authority Act just came around in '65. No, it, no, 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 no. It was a policy, not a law. It was okay. a policy. All right. That's Where just... the um, commissioner. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Family Island Commissioner. Yes, he uh -huh. he would, would identify. No, no, no. He couldn't. He would identify mm -hmm. a respected, renowned boat boat builder builder. in the community, the and he would ask that individual to check that boat out and see if it is seaworthy mm -hmm. to carry freight and passengers between islands. Oh. And once... So these were the boats that got the contract or, or any boat? No, no, no. These would be the boats that would have gotten the contract. Okay, so right. You mean to carry the mail? Yeah, yeah, the mail boats. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, that, that was a little political. The, first of all, the boat had to be approved yeah. to travel between islands. And you had to have the connection. And then your politics had to be right. Right, right, right. You couldn't be speaking against the minority government and expect them to give you a contract. <laughs> well, that's, that still stands, eh? No. Or oh, I don't sound like that these days? No, not to my knowledge. Oh, okay. Well, we ain't getting in politics. This, the one thing with this show is we don't talk politics. We talk maritime. <laughs> So the politics was, was, was there in boat building. As far as the boat builder having influence on most people in the community um, um, or, 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 or the politicians, no, 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 no. Or the politicians what, 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 putting what pressure the, on boat what builders. The, no, no. What, the, what the, the impact of the boat builders was, the main mm -hmm. impact mm -hmm. was to show that if you controlled your means of living, right, then nobody could... You're independent. Nobody could use their influence... To hold you back. To hold you back, to intimidate you, mm -hmm. to threaten you, because you didn't depend upon them to make a living. And this was not lost right. on the people. Right. 
So they were financially independent. But basically, that's what we call it today. No, I wouldn't know. When I say financially, I mean with money. No, because they didn't What I'm saying money. is they didn't have to depend on finance from somebody who could strike, strike something and cause them to don't get something. Right. That, right. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm so, with you. And so these people, the, mm-hmm. the Androsians, they were strong men. My and, people. Yeah, but you know, most of them are descended from Exuma, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't knock Exuma because you have my intro. We had two great Exumians on the list of four. Yes. So I can't knock Exuma. I had no androgen I've, on I've the written, list. Incidentally, I've written the, mm-hmm. the biography of Ronnie Gray, and very oh, yeah. shortly, I, I hope to have it published. So you research the great Ronnie Gray as well? No, but he asked me to write it. Excellent. And oh, yeah. guess what? I must, I, I must, two, of his sons, two of his sons came to me. Uh-huh. And said to me, man, can man, you, you got to write Cap's story, his life story. Which is true. I said, but you, you're, you're a couple of months late. Cap already approached me. You already had that in order. And, <laughs> you know, people said that Cap didn't talk mm-hmm. much. That's true. No, he, he didn't. He was. That's yeah. true. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. But when he and I sat down on his boat up mm-hmm. on the upper deck, mm-hmm. and, and I said to myself, I wonder what people would say if they hear how he's talking. Because he felt free. And talking yeah, to me he, because he, he knew I respected him and I knew what to write, what not to write. And I also knew what to talk and what to keep. Yeah. And that, that's that's the art of, 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 of biographies. I mean, you, you have the art and, 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 and people in Stanley Key generally, because I've been to Stanley Key over and over again when I was on defense force, we always stop in Stanley Key. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't pass it. Right. And especially the older people that I spoke with, mm-hmm. they were always free talking smooth they 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 they, they, they were not loud people in know, fact Staniel key very humble people Staniel key is an example mm-hmm. of of almost like a fairy tale type situation fairy tale in the sense that people are easy going yeah uh soft spoken gentle kind Absolutely. hospitable mm-hmm. uh and uh, respect for god you know yeah. until quite recently they didn't have uh, uh, a little store on Staniel Key. Well, I ain't getting in that because I used to go get my things from Pink Boy all the time. No, 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 but that, 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 no, that's, <laughs> after, that's long after. Yeah, that's I know. long after. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Yeah, it was Christian. Day. Well, yeah, most quiet. of the family island settings for Christian settings, you know. No, I, 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 I know that you, you spoke about boats a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I want to tell you that uh, the largest craft ever built in the Bahamas was the Marie J. Thompson. Oh, yeah, uh, the Marie J. Thompson was a four-masted schooner. Really, one hundred one hundred and eighty-seven feet in length. Wow, and six hundred and ninety-six tons. Where was that built? Harbor Island. What? That's right. Uh, it was built in Harbor Island, and of course, uh, you know, almost two hundred foot. That's right. Which year was this? This would have been in the nineteen, the early nineteen, the nineteen, the very ni- early nineteen hundreds. So that must have been a huge vessel in those it days. Was. Yeah. And William uh, Edward Roberts built it. William Roberts. Yeah, he was born in eighteen sixty nine, and he died in nineteen twenty eight. Wow. And that that huge uh, freighter mm-hmm. used to ply between the Bahamas, mm-hmm. Cuba, and Key West. So we had an international aspect. Of from course. Bahamian boats that were built in the Bahamas. Do you know how many Bahamian boats travel through the Caribbean, Central America, North America? I, I know, I know they would have done. <laughs> I talk the about the Caribbean, boats. particularly from from Ragged Island and, and from Inagua. They would always trade between Haiti and Cuba and, and Dominican no, 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 Republic. No, 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 that's a given. That that's known. That's established. But I didn't know they had boats that went to the going from part. Nassau. Big boats like what you say, almost two hundred foot long. Eh? the upper part of North. Sorry, the upper part, the northern part of South America, Central America, North America, up to Canada. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Sloops. Just to tra- do, doing trade. Sailing sloops, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty exciting. I mean, we don't have many boats doing that today. I'm talking about engine, with engine, and, 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 and yes. large enough to do it. We don't have many. I know I, I, was, I used to, to be the relief captain for Captain Black on the Freeport Flyer. Captain Vimal Black. Yeah, I have. He was the captain, and when he take vacation or, or, or if he go to do some training or whatnot, I would take the boat in his stead until he gets back, sometimes two weeks, sometimes three weeks, whatever the case may be. But 
we did a trip to a place called Fernandina Beach, which is just below the border of Georgia. Mm-hmm. So we went, it's, it's past, just past Jacksonville. It's the very last port in Florida. We would do that once a week. And I can tell you, it took us like a day and a half to get there. When we get there, we stayed overnight and, and took, but that, that's, I don't know of any other Bahamian based operations that go probably even beyond beyond the Fort Lauderdale. Well, well, we had some went to Fort Pierce. I remember the captain, Captain C, used to go to Fort Pierce once a month when it was new, just to get freight and come back and then go to Ragged Island and the Exuma Chain. Mm-hmm. Um, I went, I went once or twice with 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 with, with um, Captain Eddie and um, doing that run, but I don't think many Bahamian owned or operated boats left the Bahamas to go beyond, you know, like Cape Canaveral, like, like, like well, Orlando area. I, I spoke about the largest boat ever built in the Bahamas. Right. Um, they ran it up on a, on a, on a... Oh, ran a bank. It oh, was ran intentionally ran... Oh, it was all a bank. Bec- no, no, no. It was intentionally uh, ran up on a sand bank mm-hmm. because it could not compete with motorized vessels. And so they rounded up on this sandbank mm-hmm. and stripped it of everything they could strip it off. And, um, so that's like taking it to the boneyard? Almost like that, yes. Okay, wow. Now, I'm going to throw something your way mm-hmm. to put a smile on your face. Indeed, indeed. I love it. The largest boat ever built in Andrus was the Miss Andrus. Okay. North Master Point. On Clarence, Clarence Colebrook. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Miss Andrus was... 110 feet in length. Mm. That's a long, that's a big boat. It did not function because by the time it was finished, uh, <laughs> motor was in, in vogue then. Oh, they already started to motorize vessels. And the way it was built, mm-hmm. they could not compete. No, they, they could not put uh, install a motor in it, an engine. It, it just couldn't take an engine. It would just shake it to pieces. Right. The hull, the hull was in design. Yeah, to accommodate strong the enough to, yes. to for the engine to mount. Yeah. Right. So even today, you can still see uh, traces of of it in in up in the, the creek where they have it. Where okay. They pulled it. So never sail, as you say. No, not really. No, no, never sail commercially. Right. So Ken, do you believe you only got four minutes left? Well, I told you the time flies. Yeah. So I got some questions here you ain't touched yet, and and I mean we could always get to them at some point. But you didn't mention anything about. The, what is still going on today? The Abaco skiff is it? But 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 they small dinghies. They 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 they. No, they, well, there is there is Mr. Malone in Hope Town mm-hmm. who builds what is called the Abaco dinghy, right? And he builds the Abaco dinghy one by one, right? And by hand. He uses mm-hmm. only traditional tools, right? Oh, okay. And he told me, uh, 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 he told me, you know. Um, he is winding down now. Mm-hmm. And he told me that um, he doesn't really like to build the way he used to because too many persons come and they disturb him. Oh. They just talk and, and almost demand his attention. And they he interrupt. Wants to they too much interruption. Yeah, and you know, and he finds it annoying. Okay. Mind you, he, he, he accommodates them. But yeah. you know, at his age. Yeah, he ain't need to be bothered that much when no. he's trying to focus. Mm-hmm. Okay. And of course, you have Mr. Ansel Sanders in, mm-hmm. in Bimini. Okay. Sanders, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The great, the, my good friend, Willis Sanders people. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. They were boat builders. Oh, yes, of Oh, I didn't know that. I know he had a fishing boat and he built no, Willis actually, as a seafarer. Actually, a, a, a boat that he built mm-hmm. won its class about, oh, about 20 years ago, won its class in the Miami mm-hmm. International Boat Fair. Wow. Okay, before we close shop, because uh, we only got about two minutes left, so let me just give another shout out to my two sponsors, Bahamas Maritime Connection, um, being one um, that you know we have, I'm 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 the managing director and, and, and president of that company, so we got to give them the props for keeping the show going, and of course we got one on one pharmacy. My good cousin Shantia, they're located on East Street, Charles Sanders Highway. 
give you the best service, anything you need medical wise, and you're getting a little up in age now. So as you get your little aches and pain, you can let me know what's happening so I can hook you up. <laughs> So is there anybody you would like to give a shout out to, Brother Ken? No, no. All I would like Before to say is uh, I thank all of those persons who assisted me in my research. Right. Uh, and several of the boat builders who are very old now. I, I want to thank them for making the Bahamas what it is today through and by boat, boat building. building. Yes. Very good. Well, I thank you for coming and blessing Asha with all of your wealth of knowledge, my friend. You notice we had some very active callers because of you. What you bring to the table with this knowledge. So again, to the listening audience out there, my special guest tonight was Mr. Kendall. Should I say the last name? Butler. I didn't tell them which butler you was affiliated with. Now I'm telling them. But Mr. Kendall Butler, with his belt of knowledge and boat building, um, really, really um, made our show tonight. And I thank you for listening, as usual. And for all my callers, always appreciate when you call in. You are made, making always a significant contribution to the show. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let me just mention my good producer again, Mr. Craig Gibson. He's always on the ball and always keeping things rolling up in the studio here. And uh, with that, I say to you, Maritime Matters, out. <laughs>